Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at one of the more unique civilizations in the game, the Maori. I'll go over Coupe's bonuses, how I start games as him, and give him a score based on each victory type. Remember, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or at least giving me a like. I'm working my way to my first 1000 subscribers and with all your help, I'm getting closer to it. Coupe is a pretty fun leader to play with a really interesting start. His ability, Coupe's Voyage, begins your settler in the middle of an ocean tile with the spawn point skewed to be as far away from land tiles as possible. Before you settle any cities, you make two science and two culture per turn, and once your city is settled, you receive a free builder and an extra population to help you catch up. Your palace is also buffed, giving you three housing and one amenity. There really is no positive aspect to this leader ability, it is just a negative in the long run as you're usually spending about 10 turns looking for a good settle location. However, it is very thematic and it is a good way to start the game and it breaks away from the norm. You will get bonuses to help you catch up later in a variety of ways. So some people might find this to be irritating, but I absolutely love it. The Maori Civilization ability, Mana, begins the game with you having sailing and shipbuilding unlocked, which saves you a lot of tech turns, and you can immediately travel across oceans, meaning your first scout or warrior should be able to grab a lot of goody huts. Your embarked units get plus 5 strength and plus 2 movement, which really just helps you avoid barb galleys in the early game, and your unimproved woods and rainforest tiles get buffed. They provide plus 1 production at the beginning of the game and go up to plus 4 production with conservation later in the game. Your fishing boats are also buffed with plus 1 food, and they get culture bombs, which makes the God of the Sea pantheon a really strong pantheon for the Maori. But a downside for all of these bonuses is that you cannot get great rider points, which really doesn't affect you in the way that you might expect. You are very capable of winning a tourism victory without them, but you can also never harvest resources or place districts on any resources. You can still chop woods and marshes, but those bananas and copper tiles are there to stay forever, and those flatland, flatland stone tiles, they're just never going away. Your unique unit is the Toa. It's a swordsman that comes late, it comes at construction instead of ironworking, and it has a build charge, which means it can construct your unique unit, the, or unique tile improvement, the PA, which is just kind of a useless fort. Who builds forts? Nobody. All this does is it gives you plus four error score for the Toa, and it gives you plus four error score for the PA, so you can get a pretty early golden age. The Toa does give combat debuffs to units around them though, and a minus 5 debuff is pretty good, but it doesn't stack, and the swordsmen aren't the best unit, and they go obsolete pretty early with men at arms, so just be careful of them, they're not that great. The big bonus that Coupe gets is the Mare, which is a unique amphitheater that doesn't have any culture yields tied to itself. So you're not going to get the normal plus two culture that you get from an amphitheater, and you won't be getting the great people points from the amphitheater. However, you do get plus one culture and faith for each tile with a passable feature. That is rainforests, forests, marshes, oceans, reefs, volcanic soil, geothermal vents, floodplains any of those things, and any natural wonder that a unit can walk on. This has the potential to generate far more culture than any amphitheater should. Not only that, but you're getting plus one tourism for each of those tiles as well, leading to an insane amount of tourism. An average city will get around five tourism, five culture, and five faith per mare if you plan out your chops, and that's before conservation when you start planting your own forests. It makes the negative of never getting great rider points really not matter as long as you're playing wide enough to get enough Mare down to count for multiple great pieces of riding. If you want the easiest game of your Civ 6 career, load up a Terra map as Coupe, colonize the new world before anyone has a chance, and get ridiculous Mare yields launching you far above the rest of the pack. But I'm not going to focus on that type of gameplay today. When I play as Coupe, I always take my time with my settler. You're not losing that much by not settling because you will get a builder to catch you up, you are getting science and culture, and you will get an extra population. Take the time to find a place with good growth. You want to be able to grow to work your buck forest or rainforest tiles. And I almost always send my settler and my warrior in slightly different directions. Barbarians really aren't that much of a problem for the first 10 turns of the game. 
I want to get tribal huts easily, and sending my warrior and my settler away from each other explores the map, gives me error score, meets city-states first, and finds tribal huts. I aim to settle by turn 10 or 12 so that I can choose a good location, and remember, when the game normally spawns a sieve in, it spawns you with your capital in mind. A normal sieve is guaranteed certain amounts of resources nearby. However, Coupe doesn't get that, so finding your first city spot has to be taken carefully. A good city spot is important. Don't do what AI Coupe does and settle a one-tile island. Other than that, it's chop rainforest and work buff forest so that I can expand as much as possible to get the best use out of my mare. I am more likely to settle on top of resources that I would normally harvest because I can't harvest them or place my districts on them. I tend to go for a hybrid national park preserve game with Coupe, and I'm usually rolling in so much culture and faith that it's easy to do. You can expand pretty easily, especially with societies like Void Singers giving me yields for my faith. Don't ignore your bonus to sailing. Settle a spread out border gore empire and profit. Colonize every co uh, continent in the map and you'll be good. Culture is obviously Coupe's preferred mode of victory. Yes, you don't get great pieces of writing, but if you plan your cities out and start laying down forests with conservation, you will get an insane tourism, culture, and faith bonus on top of the tourism you already get for your national parks. You play a slower game with less districts, but you know, being placed on average because you can't really afford to give up your features, but the production from woods and rainforests and food from fish will help you get caught up, so he's a 9 out of 10 on culture. Religion is also pretty good as Coupe. Your missionaries and apostles can cross the ocean before any others. However, you are behind all other religious sieves because they started a religion race on turn 1 and you're starting on turn 10, so you often lose that race. But if you did lose it, faith is still useful in a culture game, so 6 out of 10. You can cross oceans at the start, so domination victories are possible. You can attack other continents before they can get to you, but I don't know why you would bother, so 4 out of 10. Science is also slow, you get production of food, and you keep rainforests and are incentivized to find reefs, but you get no bonuses, so 3 out of 10. We've all seen the cheesy settle no cities diplomacy win as coupe, and while yes, that is possible, you just have your exploration edge that gives you a chance to be part of more emergencies normally. I dislike diplo victories in general, and coupe is no exception. 3 out of 10. Overall, coupe is a fun way to play Civ. He's not as broken as other sims, but he does have a clear flavor in mind, and this makes him very enjoyable to play, and when things line up, they usually line up well. He's generally good and situationally excellent, which in my opinion are the best designed sims. I give Coupe a B+. Try him out. He's fun. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.